everyone, my name is Olivia and welcome to a week in the life vlog. I have been wanting to do this type of a video for a while now to kind of give you an insight into my everyday life, show you some of my weekend adventures, show you some of the books that I'm currently reading this week, as well as some of the movies that I've been watching this week. So one book that I did finish this week was Outline by Rachel Cusk. This took me a while to get into because it's a very meditative, very introspective type of read, even though though the protagonist doesn't play a large role in her own story. This novel is split into 10 parts following 10 different conversations that this protagonist has while she is teaching a writing course in Athens. So in every chapter, she is speaking to someone else and they are telling her about her, their life, they are telling her about their past and their issues, and she's just kind of a passive observer in her own story. She offers no real insight into her own life and I feel like we don't actually get connected to the protagonist of this story. Instead, we are focused on the people that are speaking to her but they never seem to actually listen to her own life nor does she ever actually offer any insight into her own life. So while I really enjoyed the beautiful prose, I felt like I was missing something and that something was a connection to the main character. I felt like the main character was a fly on the wall to her own life and she didn't have any actual substance and I just wanted more from her because while these conversations were insightful and interesting to read about, she offered no actual insight into her own life so it felt like people were just talking to her and instead of having a full conversation with her. So it felt very one-sided and it felt very off and I feel like I was just missing something and it was that substance that a main character usually offers to a story. So I did enjoy Outline but I don't think I would continue with the series because I'm just not interested in continuing with it but I am really glad that I finally finished Outline because I have always mentioned that I wanted to read this book because the cover is beautiful. So many people say it's such a wonderful novel but but while the writing was beautiful, it did not blow me away and the story itself did not blow me away. Then a movie that I saw this week was King Richard because I'm trying to see as many Oscar nominated movies before the actual Oscars even though I think that this year's Oscars are incredibly dry and just underwhelming with all their nominations, but I did see King Richard because I received a box with the King Richard Blu-ray as well as Will's memoir um, from Warner Brothers Studios, and it was amazing and really cool and such a cool opportunity. So my family and I decided to watch King Richard one night this week, and it was 
absolutely amazing. It was just so full of heart, so full of love, and it really showed how much Richard believed in Serena and Venus even before their birth that they would become such big athletes. And if you do not know what this movie is about, it follows Richard, who is the father of Venus and Serena Williams, as he trains them and tries to make them the best athletes of all time. So it very much follows Richard's story, not really Venus or Serena. They play kind of a background character to this story. So we follow Richard as he is just going head on in trying to have these two girls known by the tennis world and they are growing bigger and bigger and they're getting more opportunities but Richard is a very quirky type of person in the way that he acts, in the way that he treats his daughters. He loves them very much but he's also very protective of them. So we see that throughout this movie and we see the different battles that he has to face while he is trying to make his two daughters incredibly famous but he's also grappling with the fact that he wants them to still be children. So I really enjoyed this story. I think it was just beautiful to see a father believe so much in his daughters because you don't tend to see that in movies and you don't tend to see that relationship and while his relationship is is somewhat toxic and sometimes he acts out in ways that you wouldn't really want him to. I think it was just such a beautiful story. It made you appreciate Venus and Serena's journey so much more and it made you appreciate this family because this family was so close-knit and they just believed in each other and supported each other and you just get to see that journey from Serena and Venus playing in the park in Compton in California and going to Florida and competing in such big tournaments and it's just such a cool journey and I'm not usually one to like sports movies. I'm usually one to avoid them and I feel like I learned so much from this film and I think it was beautiful. I thought Will's performance was fantastic and the two actresses who played Venus and Serena were also phenomenal because they had to learn how to play tennis and they had to learn how to do it the way that Venus and Serena did and it was just such a fantastic movie and I just had a great time with it. So at the beginning of this week, my family and I went up to Hyde Park, New York to visit the Vanderbilt Museum and National Historical Site and it was such a beautiful trip. It was beautiful, expansive, but not too opulent. But the one thing is that we couldn't see the second floor of the building because they were redoing all the rugs up there. So we want to definitely go back when it's warmer, when it flowers are blooming and trees have actual leaves on them and I really enjoyed touring the Vanderbilt Museum because I have been a national park nerd since I have been a kid. We always try and go to as many as we can in our area so being able to tour that beautiful building was just amazing and then afterwards we went to an antique store and I found one really cool thing to add to a growing collection that I have and it is a Life magazine of Princess Diana. This is from 1982. It was originally $2 but I got it for $20 and I am never going to take it out of this plastic because it seems so fragile and it seems so precious and I just don't want to ruin it in any way but I did want to add it to my collection because I have been slowly collecting a lot of life magazines for people in history who I'm greatly interested in and I was looking through all the life magazines in the antique store and I stumbled upon this one and I knew I had to add it to my collection because I recently read the Princess Diana nonfiction that I mentioned in a previous previous books and brews and once I stumbled upon this I knew I had to add it to my collection. Now it is still kind of snowy outside and I am going to be seeing friends tonight because it's one of my friend's birthdays and we are going to Dave & Buster's to have like a game night and I'm very excited because I have not been to Dave & Buster's since high school. We had this thing called senior week where for the last week of school I believe we had field trips every single day and one of them was going to Dave & Buster's to play in the arcade all day. It was such a fantastic day and I have not been back to Dave & Buster's since so I'm excited to go back to play with friends and just hang out because I have not seen this friend group since last month so it's going to be very fun but for now I am going to try and read more of my current read which is I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetys. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2022. Are we in 2022? Yes, oh my god. But this is a historical fiction novel following Romania during the 1980s. We follow our main character, Christian, who is forced to become an informant for the secret police in Romania because they are under a dictatorship and he has to betray all of those around him in order to save all of those around him. And I'm not that deep into the book yet. I'm only 70 pages in and it's definitely taken a lot of turns that I did not expect so far and I'm excited to see where it's going to head next. I think this is a little bit more info dumpy 
than her previous novels. I feel like she's rushing to tell a story and I'm wondering what she's rushing towards because she has dropped so much information within the first 70 pages and I'm wondering what she's kind of building up to and why she's in such a rush or maybe that's just her style of telling the story. I'm not really sure. I'm still trying to figure out whether or not I like the pace or whether or not it will slow down and kind of smooth out. Is it really a vlog if I don't finish my video in this setting? I wanted to close out this week in my life vlog with a couple of updates because you saw me hanging out with my friends and we saw a lot of movies and I also finished I Must Betray You. So I want to tell you about the movies that we saw. We had a really cozy Saturday together where we saw a lot of movies and a lot of shows and we saw two movies. One was The Cube or just Cube and then we saw The Ritual. Cube is a very terrible 90s movie. It is about a group of people who wake up in a cube and have to escape it. It is dramatic. It is problematic. It is terribly filmed. It is terribly written and it was hilarious to watch. Sometimes you just need to watch a bad movie with your friends to laugh and to make jokes and just to giggle the entire time and that's exactly what we did. It was a perfect pick-me-up and we had a lot of fun with it even though it was absolutely terrible and I would not recommend it. Then we watched The Ritual. I have seen a lot of people talk about The Ritual on TikTok and a couple of times on Instagram and it is a movie about a group of men who go hiking in Sweden and in order to get back to their truck and in order to leave their hiking trip they decide to take a shortcut through the woods and once they go into the woods they are lost and unable to escape and a bunch of bad things happen and the best way that I like to describe the movie is Midsummer meets The Blair Witch Project. It is a mixture of both of those films with the cultural aspects of Midsummer mixed with the horrifying aspect of Blair Witch where people are stuck in the woods and they don't know which direction they're going in and they seem to just get even more lost and more lost. It was an absolute absolutely fantastic movie. I think if you like The Blair Witch, I think you would greatly enjoy The Ritual. It's 10 times better. I feel like the writing is so much better. It's so much more realistic and less frustrating because the characters' motivations and the decisions that they make are very understandable and it's not that convoluted and it's incredibly creepy. It's so anxiety inducing and leaves you on the edge of your seat. I was literally sitting on the edge of my seat like this just watching the movie because it was just so action-packed. It was just so well-written, so well-produced, and I just had so much fun with it. It was such a good movie. It's not one that I would re-watch again because there are certain horror movies that I just would not re-watch for the fun of it, but it is a movie that if you love those types of scary aspects of being lost in the woods, you would greatly enjoy it because it was just... It was just a fantastic movie. And now, let me wrap up 
I Must Betray You. I Must Betray You was one of my most anticipated reads of 2022. I always forget to say that. And it was actually a disappointment for me. I am just very lukewarm about the story and I just wish there was so much more detail. I feel like we were just thrust into the action and thrust into the story following our main character, Kristen, who has to become an informant for the secret police in order to protect those he loves, but he's also betraying those he loves. And I just wish that there was more detail. I wish there was more description. I wish there was more characterization because I didn't feel connected to any of the characters. They felt very one-dimensional, very flat for me. And the connections that they have with one another just didn't feel believable. Like the romance in the story and the connection with his family, I feel like it was very lacking. And I just didn't feel any sort of connection to any of the characters or their relationships. And as far as the plot, it was just very rushed. I was wondering where Ruta was rushing towards and she just kind of rushed through the whole entire story. The beginning was rushed, the middle was rushed, and the ending was greatly rushed. And I just wish that she took her time with it. I feel like the story was very much a tell versus show type of scenario where she was just telling you things that were happening. And she wasn't really painting the scene and dropping us into this story. It just felt like she was just telling us things and things kept happening. Happening and you were just kind of like rushing alongside her. This is probably one of my least favorite books by Ruta Sapetis, which I'm really sad to say because she's one of my favorite authors. But that to say, this is a very informative story. I did not know anything about the history of Romania in the 80s when they were under a communist regime. And I felt like this story really opened my eyes to that piece of history. It made me interested in it. It made me want to read more about it. So I am grateful for that aspect. I'm really grateful that Ruta highlighted a piece of history that not a lot of people would know about but I'm also very disappointed in the way that she did it. So I don't know, if you're a fan of Ruta Sapetis, if you want to read another book by her, I would definitely pick it up, but I wouldn't go into it expecting it to be as good as Salt to the Sea or Between Shades of Grey. I feel like those two books were just absolutely fantastic and this one fell a little short for me. That is the end of the Week in My Life vlog. I had a lot of fun filming this. It's a very casual type of video that I had a lot of fun filming and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you want to see any more Week in My Life or Week weekends in my life of vlogs. If you want to see specific things in these vlogs, do let me know because I definitely want to do them more in the future, but I had a lot of fun filming this. If you want to connect with me anywhere else on social media, all my links will be down below. If you want to join my Patreon, you can do that as well, and I just hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!